Maybe I'll start with you, Shahir. Is the God, it's, the, I'm reading as it's written, is the God's Son allowed to do any mistakes on the earth? God's Son? Yes, God's Son. God's Son. Well, first of all, Islam debunks the term itself. Son of God. How could God have a son? In fact, let me tell you something. Jesus... Well, sorry, just on that, because you believe that there's still a Son of God, don't you, Steve? But you don't believe in a uh, trinity or anything, a deity. Yeah, I, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, exactly as the Gospel records define it. Yes, because the Son of God is, is, a, is more than just a, the, the God's Son, I suppose, isn't it? It's a, it's a kind of a term that's given to someone who's anointed by God, as you said before. That's right. I think there's a very, very uh, fuller explanation, I guess, with that we can sort of discuss further. Um, I think it's not very simplistic. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I just want to clarify, Shahid, that's just in terms of I think God's Son is not necessarily the begotten son of the yeah. deity. Yeah. Actually, actually, the, the Quranic position does not only debunk the idea of God begotten son. The term itself, son of God, look at this how confusing it is. Jews have been using it since their times. Son of God, Nei Elohim. Today, Jesus is supposedly the son of God. Notice, notice there's no special term to describe him other than the Messiah, which Muslims already believe. The only Thing that Christians will tell me, no, he's the Son of God. Is that how you're going to define Jesus? The Son of God? So now to the question, would God allow his son to commit mistakes? Now, this is quite irrelevant because in the Islamic position is that God doesn't have a son, whether physically, whether spiritual. In fact, I'd love, I'd love to hear both of you's position on this very topic. Later on you'll hear, I hope. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe we'll start with you, or um, maybe go to Bernie. Yeah, um, so you want me to address the issue of could, could uh, uh, God's son make mistakes? Um, sorry, I'm a teacher, we do handouts. I've got another handout for you. Um, this one is called, if Jesus is God, then why did he get hungry, thirsty, eat, drink, get tired, sleep, weep, not know, and not know everything, and then die? And it talks about the whole uh, question of Jesus being pre-existent, which I believe the Bible consistently teaches, and then at a certain point in time, he came down to earth, and he, it says in, in Hebrews chapter 2, um, who, although he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. And Jesus, in heaven, he was omnipresent, omnipotent, uh, omniscient. He comes down to earth and he hands those things over for our sake. Um, and, and because of that, it, I don't believe he ever made any mistakes, but he certainly was limited. He couldn't be in... in um, uh, Jericho when he was in Jerusalem he admitted that he didn't know everything he says um, uh, the, these things that only the father knows not the son he also was limited in terms of his power he got tired he had to sleep he got hungry he had to eat and he did that for our sakes uh, that was for the 33 years that he was on earth he lived in that state and then he returned to his position of original glory so that would be how I would understand but I don't I believe he lived a perfect life um, and because of that, he can be a model for us because he lived under the same conditions that we do. Okay, obviously, you agree with but disagree with some of what Bernie said there, would you, Steve? Yeah, there's some agreement there and some disagreement. Um, could, have, could Jesus have sinned? Um, the answer would be he could have, but he did not. Um, what we noticed, A, is Jesus was tempted. Now, to be tempted means to be able to... Uh, cause someone to error or cause someone to sin. Now, if Jesus could not have sinned or made a mistake, then what would be the purpose of the temptation? But as we see in Hebrews, the Bible says that, that the Son in obedience was perfected. So what we see is, is that Jesus throughout his life up until the cross lived an obedient life under his Father. And for that, he lived a sinless and perfect life. Now, on the subject of the sonship of Christ, the Son of God, what we see here is A, Adam was called the Son of God. We see, we find that in the genealogy accounts in Luke, that Adam is called the Son of God. Later, as you proceed through the Old Testament, what you find is, is that... Um, the kings, the kings of Israel, especially David, if you read 2 Samuel 7, God entered into a covenant with his Davidic king and said, I will be a father to him, he will be my son. And so the term son of God also has royal connotations. 
Adam was actually mankind's first king on earth. God told him, you shall rule over the world. You shall conquer and have dominion. He was essentially the first king. But because of his disobedience to God, one commandment, he forfeited his right. And so God set in motion the plan of restoration of when Jesus arrived on the scene of human history. And Paul terms him the last Adam. Notice that, the last Adam. So Jesus, if the first Adam could be termed son of God, certainly the last Adam can be termed son of God. And the, the, the gospel writers and the epistles consistently affirm that Jesus is the son of God. And son of God does not mean deity incarnate in flesh. It means a, a, a human being whom God brought into existence supernaturally through the womb of Mary. If you read the birth narratives, the angel Gabriel says to Mary, when she says, well, how can this be since I don't know a man speaking of the virgin birth? She, uh, the angel Gabriel says, well, the Holy Spirit shall overshadow you. The power of the Most High will come upon you. And for this very reason, that thing begotten in you shall be called the Son of God. So, you know, we need to be consistent with the language of the text. That, the, that Jesus is the Son of God by miraculous conception or miraculous begetting in the womb of Mary, but also embracing the term Son of God in a royal covenantal sense, as the angel Gabriel said to Mary, that he is now going to be heir to David's throne. So, so I guess my sort of challenge to uh, Trinitarian Christology is... Um, if Jesus pre-existed and then incarnated, then you've got this dilemma where you've got one person, two natures, as uh, classical Trinitarianism, and they have to work through all of the technicalities around that. But I think Son of God clearly means a human being well, chosen by God. Well, there is, a, there is a question that does explicitly deal with this one, and we'll let Bernie kind of try to explain it. I think it, it may involve some repetitions, but it's still, the question is very clear. So for Bernie, what or who was Jesus when on earth? Was he also part of the Trinity when he was on earth? How do you reconcile the human man who died and also the divine person that were there too? It's essentially, I think, Steve's question as well. Yeah, I, I think this is a, a very important question. We would believe as Christians that, that Jesus was both fully God and fully human. So when he was on earth, he had the two natures uh, side by side. So uh, because of his divine nature, he was, he was perfect, he was sinless. Um, because of his human nature, he could identify completely with us. And that was significant for when he went to the cross. Because when he died on the cross, he died as a, a full and perfect sacrifice for humanity. Uh, a normal person, when we die, we'll, we'll die for our own sins. We can't die for the sins of someone else. But someone who is perfect and uh, the infinite God could do that, and he did do that. So that's an important thing. Just raising Steve's point about, um, and Shahi's point about, there being plenty of sons of God, and I, I agree with that. In uh, Adam is called the son of God, the priests are called sons of God, the kings were called sons of God, peacemakers are called sons of God. Um, if it was such a, uh, a common concept, why did the Jews get all tied up about it? In uh, Another hand out, guys. Sorry about this. Um, is Jesus the Son of God? Uh, on this one in the middle bit, uh, the, um, the, Jesus asked the Jews, um, why do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said I am God's Son? If it was such an ordinary issue, then why, why were they so upset about it? At his trial, the high priest said, are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the, the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Jesus claimed a position which was far greater than that of Adam, of the kings, of peacemakers. Jesus claimed to be the unique uh, Son of God. At this, the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we need any more witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they condemned him as worthy of death. And then they went to Pilate and they said, we have a law and according to that law he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. Uh, he claimed to be unique. He claimed to be the one who had authority over all of the earth and they couldn't tolerate that and that's why they wanted to get rid of him.